Hello Brewtubers. Well it seems that everyone's buying beer engines and hand pulls at the moment. So I thought it would be a nice idea to do a uh, cask to glass video uh, where you look at all stages of preparing um, a cask for consumption through a beer engine. Uh, so well, I've half prepared already so um, this is a four and a half gallon pin. Uh, let's take about 19 litres, uh, 36 pints. So half a firkin and um, it's all sanitized already and I've knocked the keystone in um, so sprayed it all with star sand and I whacked that in with a bloody great mallet and uh, yeah I'll just show you the, the process I go through um, in preparing the beer and I'll show you me serving it as well although it probably won't be this beer um, it'll be the best bitter but I'll be doing exactly the same process um, putting four, doing four casts at the moment, um, three to sell and one to go down the clubhouse. So, um, yes, I'll show you the process and I uh, hmm, hope you enjoy. So the first job I like to do uh, before filling the cask is to uh, blast some CO2 in it to uh, displace the air. So just switch that on. That should be enough. And then what I'll do is I'll go up to uh, the fermenter and just open the tap and the beer will start flowing in. There we go. So whilst that's doing that, here is a little mixture I've made of a water, uh, 30 grams of sugar and some finings, Isinglass finings. So I will pour that in there as well. So that's obviously just to find the beer to make it nice and clear and some priming sugar as well um, just so that the beer is uh, going to be carbonated so 30 grams for a cold crash beer um, it, it seems about right in my opinion um, that's sort of what I aim for so yeah it's just a case of filling that up to the top and uh, yeah we'll hit the shive in So that is the cask filled up. Uh, I do want to leave about a half inch bit of headspace there as well. Let's get some star sand and just spray the top. And pop your shive on. And give it a damn good whack with a big bloody hammer. So uh, yeah, best leave that at uh, for about two weeks, two and a little bit weeks, and uh, then it should be uh, ready for tapping and venting. So that was fundamentally how you um, get the cask um, ready in the first place. So uh, obviously make sure it's clean and sanitised, whack in the keystone, fill it up with some CO2 just to purge it, and uh, then start filling it with beer. 30 grams of uh, brewing sugar is, um, 30 to 40 grams is about right uh, for carbonation. Obviously, if you've cold crashed uh, your beer, then some of the CO2 will have already been dissolved um, into the beer, so um, you'd use less if you've cold crashed than if you haven't, basically. Um, I've used findings as well. I've used um, a product called Cask Lear, um, which, um, or cast clear, I think it's probably pronounced, uh, which is a concentrated form of Isinglass. I tend to put about a teaspoon or so of that in and, um, and then make a solution with the sugar with that and then just chuck it in um, as I'm filling. And then just give the, uh, the cask a little shake around just to mix it all up and then uh, wait for two weeks at least. Um, yeah, so just need to obviously make sure it's conditioned so keep it somewhere warm for a fortnight and then it should obviously be carbonated um, so yes the next stage will be to vent it how exciting so it's about two and a half weeks later and um, the cask has been racked always a good idea to um, rack it a couple of days prior to and tapping and venting it so it has a time to settle down um, so obviously if it's 
be moved around a lot. It can um, agitate any sediment on the bottom and uh, also just make it a bit lively. So just racking it, giving it a few days just helps settle it down and uh, helps all the sediment to compact on the bottom of the cask. So uh, yes, that's been there for a couple of days, two, three days. So now I will vent and tap it and get the beer engine ready. So we're going to be venting it with a spile. Spray of star sand. Spray of star sand. Good hiss to it. Nicely carbonated. I'll get a tap in in a second. I'm just going to spray the tap with star sand. Make sure it's closed as well. And uh, also the keystone. I've loosened the vent on the top. And here's the fun part. Perfect. That is in. So I want to give the beer lines a clean because they've not been used um, in a year or two. So uh, I have cleaned them out, which I'm going to run them through with purple line cleaner and some water prior to connecting up the beer. So that's a uh, purple line cleaner in there. So I've taken the little protective cap off and I'm now just running the line cleaner through. That will uh, turn a funny colour if there's any uh, yeasty or beer components left in it but at the moment it's still perfectly purple as I said I have cleaned this out recently so um, I will probably clean that with the other, other line yeah so I'll uh, run that through with purple line cleaner then I'll run it through the water then I'll connect the beer to it and now just running it through with water Still line cleaning in the line. Just getting paler and paler. There we go, that's water now. So the next job is good presentation. So I've got some ancient old brass and copper cleaner. Just put a little bit on the uh, sponge, cloth, and then we just give that a good wipe, like so. And you can see the filth there. And there's demonstration purposes. I take it off, you can see what a difference that makes. Really does bring the gleam and sparkle back to your hand pulls. And there you can see what a difference a bit of cleaner does. The one on the right nice and shiny after it's been cleaned. And the one on the left a little bit dull and two shiny pump handles so time to fit the cask to the beer engine got my John Guest fitting there so that attaches onto that I've also got a little hop and debris filter so I'll give that a blast of star sand and I'll put it in the uh, in there so that filter is in there like that. Then literally just push it in and screw. Perfect. And you want to try and take this out. There we go. And add a soft spile, which I had a moment ago. But I've since lost, so I'll do that in a sec. Turn the beer on. And we're ready to go. We're just putting the uh, soft spar in so that the uh, 
air can be drawn into the cask as I uh, pull the pump. So one final job to do before I can pour the first pipe is to put the pump clip on, like so, Watford Harlequin, and then I can pour without a sparkler. So I'm just getting water at the moment. Slightly beery coloured water, and there's the beer. So let's pour this out, and then let's pour the first bit of beer. And there we are. There's my Harlequin pale ale. And that is without a sparkler, lovely bit of head to it, some nice carbonation, little bubbles in the beer. Tastes beautiful. Oh. 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 Look at that foamy head, lovely. Tring glass, have a fling in Tring. Three, lovely. Thank you very much. A few drips, which are not wasted, I know. So that was my cask to glass video. Um, just showing you how to fill a cask up, how to prepare the beer engine, and how to serve. Uh, just one little thing to add when you are using uh, a cask, just remember to shut the tap off and uh, replace a soft spile with a hard spile um, at the end of your session uh, to help prolong the life of the beer. Um, so I tapped that on Saturday morning, um, had that Saturday afternoon, had that Sunday, it's now Bank Holiday Monday, and as you can see, we've still got a nice, good conditioned beer. There are lots of little bubbles in there. And a good head to it as well. So this is the um, Harlequin Pale Ale. 3.7%. A very nice demonstration of the hop. Um, it's got a good bit of finish to it and sort of peachy um, passion fruit pineapple flavours. But a very light, very drinkable beer. Um, we certainly had a few of these um, over the last few days. And uh, yes, the beer has gone down very well indeed. So, definitely one to rebrew. Although, um, I'll have to think about this because, uh, first off, getting hold of the hops isn't easy. The only place I've found it for is Malt Miller, and I would like to buy you know, larger volume. Um, and the sec second thing is, I originally intended for it to be a 4.6% beer, um, but because I missed the start in gravity and end in gravity, um, it was only a 3.7, so anyway, that's a, a different story. Um, but yes, that was the cask to glass video. Um, so great to actually have a cask beer on again, and um, yes, I would recommend giving it a go, especially if you're going to have um, a few people over over a couple of days, a uh, good way to uh, catch up. Okay, thank you very much for watching, and I shall see you again soon. Goodbye.